Let's take a look at one of the examples that Agilent has out of the box. So with your processing method, go down to the custom calculation, tools, custom calculation again. Now, before we do that reprocessing, I want you to look at in the injection results window, you're currently on the peaks tab of the injection results table. That has all of our names of the peaks, the signal, retention time, area, et cetera, et cetera. I want you to go to the next tab, which is the summary tab, and notice that we have no calculations at all in that summary calculate in that summary tab. Now in the tools and custom calculation section of the processing method. I want you to select the browse key immediately to the right of the linked file, and then select about fourth from the top, the cc underscore demo underscore summary dot ccf. cc underscore demo underscore summary dot ccf. Click on that custom calculation file and open. And once again, in the upper ribbon, select the reprocess all. And then we will revisit that summary injection results tab. And notice that we now have information filled in for the other layers. So we've got the sequence layer, the injection layer, and the signals layer. Remember, we use those as layers in the custom calculation file. We simply decided it was going to be on the peak or group layer. But in this particular example, we put together three other layers to show you. And what type of information are we now capturing? Well, at the sequence level, we're asking it to tell us the number of injections that were done, the total number of injections, how many of those injections were blanks, how many of them were calibrators, and how many of them were samples. Then immediately below that, in the injection level, we have the names of the uh, integrated peaks. Then we have sample information at the injection level. We have peak areas for each one of the current peaks that are highlighted in our chromatogram. In this particular case, uh, the RLM test one. Then we have identification information about how many calibrated peaks were actually seen versus how many my, uh, are, are non-calibrated peaks. Then scrolling down using the right-hand portion there, I then ask whether or not there's a number of peaks that were not found, and what were the peaks, if they were not found, what were the names of those peaks? And then finally, at that signal layer, we've got information about the signal details, and we have both an A column and a B column. So notice, even though we don't look at the B channel in the chromatograms, it's still going to be calculated using our custom calculation file. And then using the scroll bar, some other options that are there, the peak areas, the minimum uh, peak areas for each one of the signals, whether or not I've got any of my named peaks that were not found, the number of the integrated peaks that might have not been found, and the calibration peak names that are available. So this is an example of the other three layers of calculations that you could potentially do. Now let's take a look at this custom calculation file in the custom calculator itself. So go to your CC in the lower ribbon. You should have still open, but it's iconized down, the custom calculator. And then on the left-hand panel under file selection in a pretty large font, I want you to go to the fourth one down, that's the CC demo summary, and double click on it or single mouse click on it, it doesn't really matter. And you will notice that the editor on the right-hand side now has a series of different um, rows in that overview table. With just that very first row highlighted, which is, it's the identifier is the number of injections. Notice the formula that was created to create that number of injections. And that formula is in that middle string where you do the number of injections, that's going to be the way it's going to appear for us. And so first of all, it's going to look at the count of the current sequence and all injections. 
It's then going to look at the number of blanks for all of the injections, the number of calibrations for all injections, and the number of samples. And notice the way this is put together with the double quotes, with the ands as we're concatenating things together, with the open and closed uh, brackets. This is the way these types of formulas must be created. And you can go through each one of these. We're not, we don't have time in this particular seminar to go through each one of these. But you can see that as you go through this, these types of calculations can get rather complicated depending upon what type of information you're trying to gather from, the, from your system. 